For longtime professional cyclist Tyler Wren, it was a course he couldn't resist. Post retirement, his passion for food, small farms, and pedaling are giving folks from all over the country the ride of a lifetime, and they're loving every bite. I'm Carolyn Choate. In this edition of Culture, we're heading to Riverside Farm in Pittsfield, Vermont, one of four in a series of farm to fork fondos across the North Atlantic region and beyond to talk to Tyler about one of the most unique farm-to-table experiences in the country today and organized by Renegade Sports. Thanks for having me here, Carol. I'm really excited to, to chat with you about Farm to Fork Fondo. So, Tyler comes from the cycling world, and by that I mean marquee, the cycling world. You were professional at one time. That's right. I had a 13-year career as a professional cyclist and I retired at the end of 2014 to start organizing uh, events for all abilities. You, in your cycling profession, obviously it took you to uh, across the big pond. And as we foodies know, there's lots of great food across the big pond. Absolutely. So I, in my opinion, cycling and food is a great combination and it's a perfect pairing. And uh, I've created an event series with Farm Fork Fondo that combines gourmet food, aid stations at local farms, challenging rides for all abilities, um, and it really comes together in these perfect immersive boutique events. You retired from that professional world and said, hey, how can I combine the two things I love most in life, cycling and food? That's right, and you know, actually that combination is a little bit incidental to what I'm trying to do um, with this series. I'm trying to highlight issues that farms are facing in the regions where we're hosting the events, and I'm trying to motivate the cycling community to support small farms um, by giving this, them this, uh, this great immersive experience where they meet the farmers, they learn about the struggles that the farms are facing, um, and uh, they support the farms and the farm organizations in our regions. These are mamas waiting to waiting deliver. To. Waiting to deliver. This is the waiting room. Well, yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> Get the spinal block. <laughs> Trust me. Farms like Liberty Hill Farm and Inn in Rochester, Vermont, where Beth and Bob Kennett used old-fashioned Yankee ingenuity some 30 years ago and way ahead of their time to bring needed capital into their struggling dairy operation by creating one of the first agritourism bed and breakfasts in the country. Touted in travel mags, blogs, and features nationwide for its friendly, cozy accommodations and Beth's out of this world farm fresh vittles, Liberty Hill Farm, a member of the Cabot Cheese Cooperative, proved a natural partner for Tyler's Farm to Fork Fondo concept. Is Tyler Wren has done a fabulous job with his Renegade Sports focusing on the Farm to Fork Fondo. And what he's done is taken his skills and his interest and passion for biking and brought it to the farm. And what he likes to highlight is bicyclists ride through this beautiful countryside and how can they contribute their appreciation and just awareness of the, of the beautiful fields and forests that they're riding through. Well, I think he found a kindred spirit in you. You obviously know yourself of the beauty and yet the, the fragility yes. of this area. Okay. Well, our family moved here in 1979, uh, Bob and I and our two baby boys, uh, Tom and David. And then in 1984, there was a downturn in the dairy economy. So we knew we needed something in order to keep the farm going. And actually, if you think about the fact that 30 years ago, there were over 11,000 dairy farms in Vermont. 11,000? And we are now down to 840. And the reason that our farm has been able to survive the last 30 years is because we've diversified by providing the farm stay experience. So we provided lodging and meals to guests from all across the country and all around the world here on our farm for over 32 years. One of my cycling adventures was riding my bike from Nashua, New Hampshire to Montreal for, by myself for a fundraising cause. And you can't take highways, uh, Tyler, you know that. You have to take the country roads. And what are on the country roads but farm after farm after farm? 
Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. You know, and if you go to any general store here in Vermont, you're going to see postcards with cows, red barns, green pastures, and people don't realize this place. exactly like this place. And people don't realize that Vermont lost 20 dairy farms last year. Um, the agriculture in this state is in a state of flux and it's facing an uncertain future and um, people don't necessarily realize that. So I'm trying to highlight that issue and educate people on the state of agriculture, in, not only in Vermont, but uh, throughout the Northeast and all the locations where this series stops and um, trying to make people understand, okay, if we have uh, limited resources, where we spend our money on our food matters. Um, and as cyclists, we seek out these beautiful country roads. If all the farms are, are lost and developed, um, our beautiful roads disappear. Um, so there's a number of reasons to support small farms and uh, why this symbiotic relationship between cyclists, farmers, and beautiful open space makes sense. And that's the unique message of this event, Farm Before Fondo. Tyler has a wonderful series of events coming up all over, I'll say, the eastern seaboard this year. June 26 won an incredible one in the Hudson River Valley. So anyone watching who wants to plan a unique vacation, you know, I did say cycling and I did say he was professional, but this is for all levels and we're not racing. This is leisurely and uh, aesthetic and all age groups. July 17th through Vermont, right here in the outer Rutland area. We're here at lovely Riverside Farm. Oh my gosh. I, I want my daughters to get married here. I'm going to tell the owner when I leave. Maybe I'll get a discount. Um, August 6th in Pennsylvania Dutch area. That should be truly unique. And then last but not least for this season, August 28th in Maine. So tell us, uh, Obviously, we have the web address on our screen right now for people who are interested. They go on the website and they're signing up for what? They're going to bring their bikes to a certain locale. Then what happens? So we have all sorts of activities planned throughout each event weekend. Um, the main event is the, uh, the ride. And we have a mass start in the morning like a marathon. Um, but we have distance options for all abilities. So there's always an eight to 10 mile ramble ride for people who might have a rusty bike in their garage that hasn't been ridden in 30 years. Um, and we have options all the way up to 100 mile rides for the real enthusiasts and several in between. Wow. And each ride um, contains aid stations at local farms um, and the events are tailored to those locations. So for example, in Vermont, you can expect to visit uh, a maple syrup sugar house, a Cabot dairy farm, um, a local brewery, uh, when you go to Maine, you can expect to visit um, a Maine blueberry farm, um, a Maine maple syrup, and we have a post-ride lobster bake um, because our venue is a farm right on the ocean. Um, and then if you go down to Pennsylvania Dutch country with us, you can expect to see... Um, shoe fly pie, I hope. Exactly. Whoopie Yay! pies, shoe fly pie, <laughs> homemade root beer from the Amish stops, um, in addition to uh, picking peaches from the tree at a pick-your-own-peach uh, farm. And then lastly, in Hudson Valley, uh, we, we, our venue is an apple orchard, so you can expect to see New York apples. Um, and so there's, we really tailor the events to, the, to each location to uh, give you a sense for what's going on in that area, give you a, a flavor of the local agriculture. And we always have a program guide that tells you all about the, the featured farms. Uh, you get to meet the farmers. They'll be there at the stops. They're really excited to have the cyclists on, the, on their properties. The farming community is a great group of people and uh, they can't wait to meet you. So Liberty Hill Farm is going to be our first stop uh, for the riders. It's the first aid station that they'll encounter. She hosts riders for this event. So she's only about uh, eight miles away. Um, so she's been a great partner of ours. I knocked on her door uh, January 2015 when I started organizing this event. I told her what I was doing and she embraced me. Um, she's, she's really excited to broadcast her message of um, you know, agritourism, bringing people to her farm. And I think that's what I see as the future of uh, agriculture in the state of Vermont and in the Northeast is diversified farms that invite people onto their farms and give people this uh, authentic experience. You're in the grocery store and you're looking, you know, in the cheese department and, and you see the name Cabot. For those of us who are, have lived in New England, you know, for a long time or our whole lives, 
that name means a lot and it means a lot to Vermont and knowing that that is a cooperative uh, experience where <clears throat> family farms have joined together in that cooperative spirit spirit and and their day's labor goes into the products with that name on it her farm is part of that cooperative venture and it, I think a lot of the farm to table movement and a lot of the uh, not only that, but the shrinking of the footprint, the carbon footprint, is knowing where your food comes from. This is an example of us knowing, hey, her milk went into the cheese we're eating each day. Cabot is a, is a great company. Um, it is a, a cooperative, so all of their member farms own a piece of Cabot. Beth feels very invested in Cabot. Um, she was very happy to introduce me to the corporate um, marketing people to help sponsor this event. We feature Cabot cheese at our gourmet farm dinner here in Vermont and at the Post Ride Barbecue. And we also have Cabot cheese samples when we visit her farm. Um, and so Cabot makes a great range of products. And when you get to the grocery store, uh, that's something you can feel great about supporting because it's this network of small farms like Beth's farm that uh, are working hard and they're getting together to um, organize this cooperative and sell cooperatively and it benefits uh, all of them. All the profits from Cabot get distributed to its member farms. And no growth hormones? No, you know, and, and Cabot is also a B corporation, which is a designation that uh, says that not only they're committed to uh, profits and distributing those profits to the farms, but they're also committed to, uh, to social good. So they do a lot of volunteering and uh, they're just a great company and you can feel really good about supporting them. A lot of farms worldwide as you said are really engaging in the agritourism movement. It's just it's a great way for people to go and visit and see where food really does come from and I really gain an, an appreciation and awareness for what goes into producing that food. So it's a great experience for families um, but at the same time it's almost necessary for farm families to find some form of diversification. They cannot rely on the commodity price for their product, whether it's milk or coffee or anything. It's really, you, you've got to find some kind of niche market. So for us, being a part of the Cabot Creamery Cooperative and having that value added to our milk by making it into the world's best cheddar, but then also bringing people here to meet the cows that make the milk for that cheddar cheese is just a terrific win-win for everybody. Are you surprised sometimes? I mean, this is a big group that comes. I mean, as we've already mentioned with Tyler, these are groups of 500 people. Are you surprised uh, still sometimes at the, forgive my uh, lack of a better term, ignorance of people that, you know, he said people come from 20 states and a lot of them are city slickers. Are you, does anything surprise you? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> Taking in guests for 32 years, you've pretty much been asked just about every question there is to be asked. Um, it, it doesn't matter if you're asked when do cows start giving milk, which is in my mind obvious. They have to have a baby, but a lot of people don't think about uh, biology 101 and gene. mammals. Yeah, yes, right? To, uh, I was telling our guests from Texas this morning about some couples that were here from Iceland who wanted my recipe for maple syrup. And I tried to explain that you take the sap from the tree and, you know, boil it down and that's maple syrup. And they were, got very angry because they thought I was not Withholding. being... Uh, hospitable to give them the recipe for maple syrup. So, you know, I had to actually get out a book and show them how maple syrup is made. So, you know, it's just, it's really, really fun to introduce people to everything about a farm, you know, whether it's the animals or the land or talking about our environmental stewardship, all of that is just so important. I bet the farmers are loving Tyler Grin this year. Yeah, you know, I mean, we really are trying to support these small farms. And uh, as an anecdotal story here in Vermont, uh, Mom and Pop's Maple Syrup is our uh, sugar house stop. 
And last year we put in an order with them for 800 maple candies to have ready for the riders. It was the biggest order they ever received. Oh, it wow. took them two weeks of working uh, around the clock to get that order ready. Um, and then they came to our post ride festival here at Riverside Farm and they sold more maple syrup in one day than they ever had before. And uh, that really you know, get, touched me in my heart to hear that story from them, that feedback, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, the riders, they, they showed up, they signed up, so we were able to put a big order in. And the riders, they wanted to take home a piece of Vermont, they took home some maple syrup with them, and they su supported this great small farm and really helped us with our mission to, uh, to benefit these farms. So was last year your first venture <clears throat> doing it? Yeah, this series started last year in 2015. We had our Hudson Valley and Vermont event. So we're expanding this year to Pennsylvania and Maine. So ideally, uh, you know, the other aspect is the, the social aspect, the people getting to meet new friends, you know, on the trip, the opportunity maybe to see a part of the country more uh, intimately than they have before. So how many people mm. go on these trips? Um, that's that's a good. What's your limit? Yeah, we have about 500 uh, participants. Wow, per, that's big. Yeah, exactly, and that's and we limit it to that, and that's a great size because it, it feels like a big event, and uh, but it's also manageable and it's intimate. We can uh, meet everyone and shake hands with everyone. Everyone will still get a chance to have great food, um, but within that event, there's also these um, activities for family members who maybe don't have a bicycle. We have gourmet farm dinners the night before the ride. We have bicycle skills clinics from the Cola Vita Bianchi professional women's team, which is a uh, professional team that attends all events whose, whose mission is to empower young female athletes and young athletes around the country to have cycling as a healthy habit. Um, we have uh, live music. We have local vendors at our post-ride festival. So even if you haven't ridden a bike, I encourage you to come out to these events. You'll have a great time. We have great food. Um, these are welcoming and festive events for everyone. This is uh, <clears throat> such a great uh, extension of your, of your past life in, into the future. And uh, obviously you've made uh, some great friends along the way and a lot of uh, business friends, uh, etc. cetera. So uh, I guess at the end of the uh, e experience, I'm imagining that it might be a little emotional, a little sentimental. Uh, for me, or the whole group. Uh, yeah, this is a, you know this is a this is a very special experience that we're trying to create. You know, we're working year round to have a lot of detail at these events and to have, you know, we're cultivating the relationships with all of our farmers that we stop at. Um, they get really excited about this. We're checking in with them when we're on the road and we're uh, giving them updates. We're 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 getting the orders in, and uh, they're very emotionally attached. We're very emotionally attached to this event, and uh, we're providing a unique experience. And I think. Uh, you know, a, a great experience is something that you can remember and cherish uh, for a long time. So it's not uncommon for people to be emotional here. And it's a, it's a challenging ride. Even if uh, you haven't ridden your bike in, in 30 years, a 10-mile ride, that's a challenge. And we understand that. Um, and we're going to support you along the way. You're going to have a break halfway through. We're going to have vehicles out on course in case something goes wrong. So we encourage you to challenge yourself. Um, but at, at the end of the day, this is about um, having that unique immersive experience um, and uh, bringing all your family and friends to enjoy it with you. This is where everyone wants to be in your house, the kitchen dining room. Absolutely. <laughs> I everything actually, I bread. Yeah. Well, I actually have a rocking chair in my kitchen. It's the visiting chair. So when people come to stay here, they visit with me while I'm cooking in the kitchen. And I'm imagining that uh, you I'm adding a little bit of it tonight. I'm making this and that. I'm going to add this or that, and you're talking your way through it for them. Sure, absolutely. Um, so for dinner, I had maple cranberry chicken. Uh, we did a carrot souffle. I did the fiddleheads that we talked about. I had we made homemade cheddar biscuits with our cabbage cheddar. I had uh, tossed salad, broccoli salad, and then I did a rhubarb dessert wow. with cabbage vanilla bean yogurt as the dressing on top instead of whipped cream. So Wow, that's a lot. That no, it's that's normal. <laughs> that's what I do. I cook for feed people and I feed them well. So how many guests can you have here? 
We have seven guest bedrooms. Wow. So, yep. So it's a lot of fun. We can. No wonder you have two dining rooms. <laughs> well, we often will bring the put the two tables together when we have a house full, or we might have a children's table and an adult table. I mean, whatever works for that particular group that's here. I gotta ask Beth when she gets a vacation. Not too often, but. You know, the cows, somebody has to be here with the cows 24-7, The farmer's dilemma, right? Absolutely. Yep. Can't go on vacation too well when you have a dairy farm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I just uh, want to reiterate what a great experience it was to, to meet you and to share your story with, with my viewers, who I hope will take uh, us up on the offer of getting to know farm life, please, and, uh, and help keep it alive. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carolyn. I appreciate that. You know, when you talk about the amount of people, 500, I'm going, you know, here we are in little Pittsfield, Vermont. Where are people going to sleep? Under the stars? Um, yeah, so <laughs> Pittsfield, Vermont is a, is a tiny little town, and lots of the venues uh, that we have are tiny little towns, and we really want to have a strong tourism impact in these rural communities, and these events bring um, a lot of people in from 20 plus states for all our events. So it's uh, this is a big deal for these little towns and they embrace these events, which I'm really excited about. Um, people come here and they spend money at the local businesses. They stay at the local hotels. Um, we're fortunate to have partners at all of our events to provide uh, weekend packages. So they're called first class packages and those will include overnight lodging at some of the unique lodging spaces here at Riverside Farm and at our other venues. It'll include tickets to the gourmet farm dinner front row um, starting at the at the mass start on Sunday morning, uh, dinner before the, uh, sorry, breakfast before the ride, your post-ride barbecue, and also uh, the jersey and shorts. We work hard to make sure we do have space for everyone to stay. Um, Killington is right up the road here in Vermont, so there's there's a lot of hotel rooms for that, for that um, ski resort. I got one chicken bone to pick with you though, Tyler. Where's New Hampshire on the list? That's my home state. <laughs> Where's New Hampshire? Can they be added in a future year? Absolutely. You know, we, we're actively looking at new locations for this uh, series. Um, we've had such a great reception from the Farm to Fork Fondo series, and we're getting communities and tourism agencies reaching out to us, wanting to bring this series to their locations. And New Hampshire's on our list. We're based in, in Vermont, so New Hampshire's right next door. That's right. Uh, we'd love to do a, an event in New Hampshire. There's a great farm to table scene going on in New Hampshire right now, that I, and um, so it's on our list. We'll. Uh, We'll investigate. Great. <laughs>